Appreciate y'all coming out today. I know our kids are excited uh, about fan day. Not that they're not excited about media day, but they are excited to uh, interact with, with our fans. Obviously, Lane Stadium's been a special place to play over the years, and it's always fun uh, to get to interact with the people that make it special, which are the fans. Uh, we've had a good start to camp. We're 10 practices in. We have a tremendous amount of work to do. Um, again, our old guys are, are continuing to try and bring the young guys along. Um, you know, but every day is a challenge for us. We're continuing to try and get better. I think the kids deserved another day off today. Uh, I kind of like the way the schedule has fallen. Uh, we're now finished with summer school, which is kind of a unique part of our scheduling uh, is that we're in summer school throughout a, a decent portion of, of, of two days or camp. So we're done with that. We've got a week left of, of just playing football. So Yo, uh, have questions, raise your hands. We'll get a mic to you. Justin, your last two Memphis teams ranked 36 in the country in pace of play. Tech was below 80th in each of those two seasons. How much of a change is that, and how has it been teaching that to your players? You, or are you not wedded to that pace, perhaps? Oh, I don't know. You know, fun, you know pace is a function of a lot of things. You know, it's a function of efficiency. Um, you know, it does it does you no good to, to go quickly and not execute. I mean, we all know that, and that's stating the obvious. But um, you know, the the more efficient you are, the more opportunities you have to pick up the tempo. Um, so, you know, I think it's going to be a byproduct of a couple things. You know, one, how many guys we feel comfortable with playing, and two, how efficient we are. Um, will ultimately determine those those factors and the types of games that we play in. You know, two years ago at Memphis, we were very very good on defense. We had eight senior starters, so we manipulated the pace a little bit more in terms of uh, you know, we weren't afraid to punt, so to speak. So to speak, our most recent year at Memphis, we were very young. We, we graduated all those senior defensive players and you know our mentality had to change a little bit offensively again I go back to kind of what we talked about to start with it's about trying to find a way to win the ball game um, so how has it been it's been good the kids have embraced it the kids have, have, have tried to do it ultimately I don't know what the final statistics will be on how fast or slow we end up moving um, it's kind of there's kind of some variables in there that will ultimately determine um, you know, how quickly we end up moving. Coach, we always worry about coming out of uh, the spring and, of course, back in through the summer injuries. I mean, how healthy are you right now, and, and how has, uh, you know, that progressed and, and some of the players might be coming back still? Yeah, we've we've had a successful camp in that, that aspect. I think two groups of people deserve a tremendous amount of credit for that. Um, you know, Mike Goforth does a fantastic job in our training room. Um, and Ben Hilgard has done a great job getting our kids ready for camp. Uh, I just can't say enough about the job he and his staff have done. You know, you can never eliminate all of those things. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, th I think through some of the things we've done, it's given us a chance to maybe avoid some of those things. So we're in good shape uh, heading forward. Justin, when you first met Brendan Motley and got to know him a little bit, what were your impressions? What did you think of the guy? Oh, there was a, a young man that was uh, that loved Virginia Tech, um, that that wants to wants to play well and play at a high level. He's a very laid back guy, which is absolutely fine with me. There are a bunch of different personalities that have played quarterback through the years, and you know, he's a he's pretty laid back, which easy to get along with and talk to. Uh, much like talking to an adult in terms of his maturity level. Uh, you know, I think the things that are really important to him in his life are, are the important things in life. Um, 
and I've enjoyed uh, our relationship. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, he's a big, strong kid, throws the ball well, you know, he's a good athlete. Um, you know, my understanding was he's a, a highly decorated kid coming out, you know, was, you know, kind of did it all, comes from a long lineage of good athletes, and, uh, and he showed that. I guess at this point we have to ask you every time, have you named a starter yet for quarterback? No. Uh, general impressions from the scrimmage yesterday getting out there? Oh, I'd say some good and some bad, you know, but I'd say that's pretty on par with, with everybody out there. You know, I don't um, – I understand the importance of that position. Trust me, I, I do. Um, and I understand the, the curiosity behind it. I think that spot is much like many other spots on our team right now. You know, there's – you go out there and uh, – see some good things and, and see some things that we need to get cleaned up in order to give ourselves a chance to have success from 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 both both guys. Back. Coach, uh, you're less than three weeks away from uh, the season opener. Just uh, your thoughts and feelings. What do you feel is the biggest thing you learned about your team with uh, three weeks to, less than three weeks ago before kickoff? Well, you know, I, I feel like I have a pretty good handle on our team um, in terms of uh, I think we have a, a selfless group of guys that, that wants to do what's right, that wants to work incredibly hard and, and have give themselves a chance uh, to win ball games. You know, there's a certain level – workload that you have to do to, in order to just give yourself a chance or no guarantees but uh, they've been willing to do that thus far I think this is important to them um, you know I like where their mind's at I you know I don't know to me it's about getting the job done now it's about let's go execute let's um, you know let's let's learn how to prepare let's let's do the little things taking care of our body and that sort of stuff to give ourselves a chance. So, you know, I like their mindset. I, we're going to go through ups and downs. They know that, you know, how we handle those ups and downs, whether it's in the first quarter of a game or through an entire half or through a week or whatever it is, however we handle those ups and downs uh, will ultimately determine our long-term success. So uh, we're, we're getting them ready for that. What's your preference in terms of eight or nine conference games uh, scheduling going forward for the ACC? Yeah, you know, that's a that's a good question, one that's been talked about a lot amongst the coaches, and I'm sure the athletic directors and WIT will do a great job making the decision that, that's best. The thing I would tell you, there are a lot of factors out there when you start talking about Notre Dame being on the schedule. Um, when you talk about there's some teams that have their – their rivalry games are non-conference games. You know, ours is an in-conference game. So, you know, there, there's different sets of kind of demographic. Each, each, each team has got their own set of issues, or each program has their own set of issues, whether it's eight or nine. Um, you know, all that being said, I know Witt and, and the rest of the athletic directors will make the decision that's best for the league, and whatever it is, we'll move forward with it. Coach, no, uh, I don't. I've thought about it, quite honestly, and there's a lot of pluses, minuses on both sides. Uh, you know, I'm I'm good with whatever we decide. Coach, the uh, offense pretty well starts and ends with the offensive line. How good is the offensive line thus far? Do you think? Well, we'll see. You know, I like. Uh, you know, kind of that's the group that. Uh, ever since we've been here has been the most consistent in terms of being accountable, being where they're supposed to be, being ready to go to work on a daily basis. I love their mindset. Um, we have some young guys that are pushing for, for playing time at different spots. Um, it'll be interesting to see as we continue to move forward how it all kind of unfolds. I know in the long run, you know, we'll need, you know, however many – we feel comfortable with the 10 or 11 guys that that we feel comfortable with we're going to need them so um 
you know, they're, they're coming along. We've got great leadership, I'll say that, and Augie Conti and John McLaughlin. They are fantastic individuals that, that have worked incredibly hard and do a great job setting the tone for that room. Coach, uh, Jimbo Fisher earlier, th- well, for, start, you opened the season against the FCS team in Liberty. Jimbo Fisher earlier this week said FBS teams playing FCS team is good for college football, whether it be playing a smaller FCS school that makes their budget for the year and helps them. How do you feel about playing FCS teams and what that does for college football? Sure. Well, I think the, the point that uh, Coach Fisher was trying to make and didn't make is there's a trickle-down effect. You know, when you start to think about I've coached and played at the 1AA level, and we needed those games in order to help the women's rowing team or, you know, the other you know, non, so-called non-revenue or Olympic sport teams make their budget. And, um, and in turn, those, uh, I still call them 1AA, but those, those, those 1AA teams in turn play a Division II team and pay them a little bit of money. So there's certainly a trickle-down economic effect, if you will, um, in college football. And I just think, I don't want to speak for Coach Fisher. I'm just saying, um, you know, all of those things need to be taken into consideration when we make decisions. And I believe that that on many different levels, whether it's eight or nine conference games or whether it's um, scheduling models or however it is, I mean, there's, there's some real factors to be taken into consideration when we're when we're making those decisions last one for coach and then we'll bring uh, coach foster up in the back coach you had said early in the preseason that one of your big concerns was depth at wide receiver are you making progress there do you see any uh, good possibilities for depth i would say this i would say um we are making progress, and I'm encouraged by it. I would say it's still a concern. You know, Jalen Bradshaw has had a good camp, is, 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 is coming along nicely. Uh, Henry Murphy is having a good camp, coming along. Uh, Divine Diablo and Eric Kuma uh, are two other guys that have a chance. C.J. Carroll has, has been doing a good job. So within those guys and then some of the other younger guys, um, you know, I'm hopeful that we can, those guys can keep making progress to keep giving us some quality, some quality depth there. But um, we're certainly better off than we were uh, two weeks ago or two months ago, but still have a lot of work left to do. All right. Thank you, Coach. You bet. Thank you all.